Hello and welcome to Loyola New Chicago. I'm Lauren Smith. Now according to Dr. Amick, underneath me is anywhere between 18 inches and 3 feet of landfill. This space starts at Loyola's parking garage and stretches all the way over to buildings Dumbuck and Cudahy. The Midwest is no stranger to winter weather and with snowy conditions come tricky commutes. Loyola has roughly 16,000 students and almost half of them have to commute to class. Dangerous driving conditions and heavy snow can make it difficult to get to campus. Loyola's official policy is to remain open unless it is too difficult for employees and students to make the commute. But after Chicago's last winter storm, this policy went under serious criticism. The men's basketball team notched a win at Gentile Arena, but it was the university's Jesuits who stole the show. Joaquin Carrick has more in sports. There is no doubt that Cardinal George left a great legacy here in Chicago. But what is also significant is how available he made himself to anyone he encountered. Even students here at Loyola can recall personal experiences they've had with Cardinal George. In case you missed it this week, 90s fans rejoice as a spin-off sequel to Full House was officially announced. Fuller House will air 13 episodes on Netflix, bringing all the previous cast members to reunite in the first episode. John Stamos, better known as Uncle Jesse, is producing the series. It will air next year. That was so much fun, and I loved all the free food. You know what? I am so mad that I missed it. You oh, no. Know, I know. You'll have to come back I next will. year. And and next year, yeah. I'll be in line getting my hot dog and eating some good food. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, there's petroleum jelly here, too. Oh, so how's it, how's it labeled? In the archaeology lab on Loyola's Lakeshore campus, students are discovering artifacts that date all the way back to the late 1800s. This gives students an idea of what life was like at that time. We're working backwards in a sense, where we're taking this result and product and trying to figure out where it came from and what it meant for the population as a whole. You may be surprised to know that these artifacts were found in a landfill under Hallis Field, which is just a short walk away from the lab itself. But students can only get their hands on new artifacts when the land is exposed during construction. Loyola archaeologist Daniel Amick has been collecting artifacts from the site for the past 20 years. He says this landfill is a direct reflection of the early Rogers Park and Edgewater communities. But there was no citywide sanitation system. And so there were individuals who would come and collect your rubbish and they would get what they could out of it that was useful. And what uh, was not useful, then they would deliver to a nearby dump. Now, according to Dr. Amick, Underneath me is anywhere between 18 inches and 3 feet of landfill. This space starts at Loyola's parking garage and stretches all the way over to buildings Dumbuck and Cudahy, and even underneath Loyola's steam plant. Now because this area is constantly disrupted during construction, this begs the question, are there toxins in this landfill and should the residents in this area be concerned? Loyola chemist Dr. Elena Fitch specializes in environmental toxins. She says because of the landfill's age, this site is not a major threat to Loyola residents. The older the landfill, the less material is coming out of it. I would not myself pick that as my major environmental concern. Dr. Amick also doubts the site is a threat to the community. In fact, whenever the landfill under Hallis Field is exposed, Dr. Amick and his students try to take that opportunity to get one step closer to the past. Lauren Smith, Loyola News, Chicago.